Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. In this video, different applications of genetics will be overviewed. Referred to as DNA technology or biotechnology, this is one of the largest areas of current scientific research. In addition to covering the uses, the benefits of these technologies, I also focus on the ethical concerns and problems involved in these fields. The first field of biotechnology that we'll be discussing is referred to as DNA sequencing. There is an absurd amount of DNA in every cell of your body. To read the code one letter at a time from start to finish would be very difficult and take a very, very long period of time to do. Shotgun sequencing, as shown in this slide, is the way that scientists determine the order of DNA bases today. This technique works by cutting up DNA into reasonable sized chunks using chemicals called restriction enzymes. By finding the sequence of these smaller chunks and using computers to stitch the code back together, using overlapping chunks, a whole DNA sequence can be put into order. There was a decade-long collaboration to sequence the human DNA, referred to as the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project was a 13-year endeavor started in 1990 that had a projected cost of $3 billion. This project was the largest collaboration of scientists on any one specific project. The goal of this project was to sequence humans' DNA for many purposes some of which involve the treatment of disease. The Human Genome Project acted as a springboard for genetics research over the last decade. This slide illustrates some of these studies as well as the year of completion. Many of these specifics include learning about how to treat disease. One field is called pharmacogenomics and will be described later in this slideshow. In addition, other research has been conducted and information has been gained in the area of livestock breeding, human evolution, human migration, DNA forensics, biofuels, and environmental monitoring. The benefits have been very tremendous and diverse. At the other end of the spectrum, there are many ethical concerns involving the data that's available from the Human Genome Project. First, with a knowledge of disease, there can be an identification of individuals with different diseases, even before their birth. There are many ethical concerns involving genetic screening, as this is called, that will be discussed later. Another concern is privacy. If your DNA is used to identify you in the future, kept on file just in case, it might also be used to determine your likelihood of disease. Individuals or companies could use this information to, de to deny you employment or insurance. Some companies have sought to even patent certain genes. Genetic screening was first completed in 2003 over a period of 13 years, involving countless scientists and at a cost of around $3 billion. Today, this can be accomplished in about two weeks for $1,000. This is the primary reason that DNA sequencing can be used today to solve crimes and screen for different diseases. Adults can be screened for genetic disorders at any point in their life in what is referred to as adult screening. An example of this would be testing for the two genes that predispose you for breast cancer. Provided with this knowledge, individuals that have certain forms of this gene can opt to have a mastectomy, which is a removal of breast tissue, or an oophorectomy, which is a removal of the ovaries. These techniques can reduce the chance of breast and ovarian cancers by over 90%. While there are many benefits, such as the example provided for breast cancer, there are some concerns over the diagnosis of incurable diseases. Another form of genetic screening is referred to as carrier screening. Two individuals that wish to have children can both be analyzed genetically to figure out if they're carriers for the same diseases. With this knowledge, individuals can choose whether or not to have children together. Again, there is controversy involving this form of genetic screening. The last form of screening is referred to as prenatal screening. Prior to birth, that is prenatal, a child can be analyzed in a variety of different ways for genetic diseases. Two or more traditional means are provided on this slide. Amniocentesis, where the amniotic fluid is tested, and chorionic villi sampling, where some of the placenta is used for analysis. More modern techniques can even use the mother's blood to test for disease. The controversy with prenatal screening involves not the testing itself, but how the information is used. Incidence of abortion of a child that is diagnosed with Down syndrome, for example, is about 90%. One use of DNA sequencing cited earlier involved forensics, often the identification of criminals or victims using their DNA. The problem is there is often very little DNA that's available for analysis. A technique called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR for short, remedies this problem. 
By adding a number of different chemicals and rapidly heating and cooling DNA, one strand of DNA can become over a million strands in about 10 minutes. This process is illustrated in detail on the picture on this slide. While an entire genome can be sequenced in a lab in about two weeks for $1,000, you can produce a DNA fingerprint of an individual using their DNA in a process called gel electrophoresis in about an hour for about $50. In this process, DNA must be cut into small pieces with chemicals that are called restriction enzymes. DNA is placed into what are called wells within a gel, and the DNA migrates towards a positive charge when an electrical current passes through them. The DNA segments separate by size, large pieces can't pass through the gel as fast as small pieces, and the DNA from two people can be compared to see if they belong to the same person or even if they're relatives. This process has very many applications. Another use of restriction enzymes can be to cut out certain segments of DNA from one organism and to give them to another organism. In this process, genetic modification, you can even take a human gene and put it into a bacterium. Genetic modification of bacteria is very easy, as bacteria are very simple. All it involves is fitting a gene that you're interested in into a plasmid, which is a small chunk of circular DNA that bacteria possess and can pass back and forth to one another, and convincing the bacteria to take that plasmid into their cell. Human insulin is primarily produced for individuals with diabetes in bacteria by using this method. Without it, there would be a terrible shortage of insulin, as the common alternative source would be a human cadaver. Genetic engineering in plants shows some similarities and some differences with the process that we just described with bacteria. While plasmids are used in these organisms, the technique for getting the plasmid into the plant is a little bit different. Plants have a very thick and hard cell wall that's made out of cellulose. The easiest way to get that plasmid into a plant cell is using a CO2-powered gun shooting DNA-laced heavy metals in a process called biolistics. Over 70% of the foods in a typical super supermarket are GMOs, that is, genetically modified organisms. Corn, for example, is bred to avoid predation by insects. Genetic modification can also be completed in animals. Glowfish, for sale at most pet stores, are genetically modified to glow in ultraviolet light. They have different fluorescent proteins that are added to their genome artificially. The process is possible in any organism, even humans. Since there is no cell wall in animal cells, but they contain a nucleus, a tool called a micromanipulator, shown in action with this picture, is used to insert foreign DNA into the nucleus of another organism. You could theoretically add any trait to any animal, even humans, were it not for the ethical concerns. One medical application of genetic modification that involves humans and viruses is a process called gene therapy. In this process, cells are removed from a patient infected with a virus and injected back into that patient. This virus is not intended to cause disease, but to alter the genome of its host, curing or preventing some disease. Unfortunately, patients of gene therapy can try to fight off this infection, even though it shouldn't cause any harm, and some people have died or become seriously ill as a result. For this reason, gene therapy is not commonly used today. Another field of biotechnology with medical applications is referred to as pharmacogenomics. This field takes into consideration an individual's DNA and how that will impact their response to different medications. Since every person is different, some drugs may help some people more than others. Some individuals might even have a negative reaction to drugs instead of a positive one. This knowledge can be used to treat individuals with different drugs in order to better improve their health. The last field of biotechnology that we'll be discussing is referred to as animal cloning. Animal cloning has been going on for quite some time, but was popularized when Dolly the sheep was cloned and born in 1996. This process is possible by taking a cell from one sheep and electrically fusing it with an egg cell or an oocyte and growing it in a petri dish and then finally implanting it into a surrogate mother. This technique has been used in a number of incredible ways. One example would be producing identical transgenic animals, those whose DNA has been modified in some specific way, for drug trials. Another example would be to produce stem cells to treat disease. Finally, think Jurassic Park. Cloning could be used to revive extinct species. Animal cloning, like many other DNA technologies, is ripe with controversy. Opponents of this research suggest that scientists are playing God. In addition, many embryos are lost in this very complex process. 
Other points of conflict involve selection for desirable traits in a process called eugenics. That is the end of this video summarizing some of the major fields of biotechnology. If you're interested in learning about any more topics regarding genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.